which people can pose instruments will be starting this summer. And also uh, interesting uh, subject of matter is what are they going to call it? So I would say look forward into, into the near future. Planetary Television is holding a Europa Orbiter naming contest. Anyone interested in participating should send your name suggestions to planetarytv at gmail.com. The top five name suggestions will be selected by the Planetary Television staff and aired here on Planetary News for the viewers to cast their vote as a comment. This is the Mars weather for the week of April 6th through April 12th, 2009, from the MRO, or Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This here video shows the appearance of Mars as seen by the MRO day by day. The images were taken by the onboard Mars Color Imager. Approximately 270 images in seven different colors were mosaic together and then projected onto a globe to create seven false color daily global maps. This week, dust storms continued moving along the south polar ice cap, most notably in the Noachus, Argyre, and Aeonia regions. Most of the dust storms died out by the end of the week, but there was an optically thick dust haze lingering over most of the southern mid-latitudes, hiding Argyre and Hellas from view. The area around the Tharsis volcanoes remained dust-free, with pristine, clear skies. Clouds consisting of water ice streaked across the northern mid-latitudes as well. The Mars rover's spirit and opportunity saw somewhat hazy skies, which started to clear up near the end of the week. This has been Andrew Reeves with this week's Mars Weather. Thank you for watching, and now back to Errol Coder. Thanks a lot, Andrew. I'd like to take this moment to thank Andrew for joining us. Uh, I first met him last year when he was doing Mars temperature updates, and I decided to bring him along with us and uh, so he can bring his skill and be part of planetary television and planetary uh, news. Spirit experienced a series of anomalous events beginning on Sol 1872, which was April 9, 2009. Spirit failed to wake up for three planned events. The rover eventually woke up from an expiring alarm clock timer 27 hours later. Then an unexpected reset of the rover occurred on Sol 1874, April 11, 2009. A second reset occurred on 1875, April 12, 2009. It was also discovered that the rover did not record any data in flash memory on Sol's 1874 and 1876, April 11th and April 13th, 2009. That is why there is no images available. Sol's 1877 and 1878, which was April 14th and 15th, 2009, have been normal without any errors or anomalies. At this time, there is no explanation for these anomalies. The rover is power positive with the batteries fully charged each day. All temperatures are, f are resetting with allowable limits. The project is systematically resetting subsystems to bring the rover back to normal operations while continuing to investigate this anomalous behavior. Normal but cautious operations are expected by the middle of the next week. As of Sol 1878, April 15, 2009, as of Sol 1878, April 15, 2009, which was yesterday at the time of this recording, Spirit's solar ray energy production is 241 watt hours, with atmospheric opacity around 0 0.964. The dust factor is around 0 0.316, meaning that about 31.6% of the sunlight hitting on the solar arrays penetrates the layer of accumulated dust on, this, on the array. Spirit's total Odometry is 7,726.28 or 78 meters, which is about 4.80 miles. Opportunity has been crater hopping as the rover heads south, making drives between several small craters and taking drive by images of them. These small craters, just a few meters or yards in diameter, are more are from fairly recent impacts occurring in the last maybe 10,000 to 100,000 years. Four drives were completed in the week, totaling more than 140 meters, about 459 feet. 
The drives were all blind drives. They used a mix of driving forward and driving backwards. The longer drives include slip checks. Importantly, wheel currents have returned to more normal levels, levels for the right front wheels drive actuator after it was rested for several soles following concerns about drawing higher than usual current during drives in February and March. As of Sol 1858, which is April 15, 2009, yesterday at the time of this recording, Opportunity's solar array energy production is 491 watt hours. Atmospheric opacity remains around 0 0.921. The dust factor is 0 0.615, meaning that 61.5% of the sunlight hitting the solar array penetrates the layer of accumulated dust on the array. Opportunity is in good health with an odometer total of 15,205.65 meters, about 9.45 miles. At the end of a vote held by NASA to name the next International Space Station segment, Node 3, NASA decided on calling it Tranquility, after the lava basin on the moon where the first moon landing, Apollo 11, took place. This sparked controversy because the leading candidate at the end of voting was Colbert, a popular comedian who hosts the Colbert Report. On the April 14th episode of the Colbert Report, astronaut Suni Williams announced the name of Node 3, which is Tranquility. Surprisingly, and to the delight of Colbert, she announced the name of the treadmill to be placed in there. It's called Colbert, an acronym for Combined Operational Load-Bearing External Resistance Treadmill. The image shown is the official patch for the treadmill. Okay, it's time for the uh, the newest updated images from the Cassini spacecraft. Uh, its main objects of view right now is going to actually be Titan. So this first image, uh, released on April 8th, 2009, uh, a bright narrow ring dominates this view of the Cassini division separating Saturn's A and B rings. The brightest ringlets in this image has been spotted by Cassini before, and is known to be eccentric. And in the right of the division, an incomplete arch of bright material scores the edge of the outer B ring, a region mark, uh, markedly disturbed and shaped by the acting of a strong gravitational resonance with the moon Mimas. Cassini scientists are presently investigating the shape and behavior of the outer B ring. Inc all right, this next picture, released on April 9th, 2009. A faint G-rig surrounding Saturn offers up a glimpse of its newfound tiny moonlet. The moonlet is near the center of this image. A long exposure of 45 seconds was required to capture the light from this tiny object and G-ring. So, uh, so the moonlet and a few stars have been smeared by motion, the stars showing up as a short diagonal dashes. The moonlet has also been, uh, in August 2008, Cassini scientists spotted this moonlet, dubbed S2008 S1. Its orbit is an arc or partial ring within the G ring. Imaging team scientists estimated the moonlet's diameter at about half a kilometer, one third mile. Okay, this last picture, uh, submitted on April 10th, 2009. From the dark side of the Titan, the Cassini spacecraft profiles the moon's atmosphere as sunlight filters through its upper gehazes. An airless satellite would appear in this view in geometry only as a lit crescent, but Titan's thick atmosphere scatters light all uh, along the edges of the planet to create a ring of light. Images taken using the red, green, and blue spectral filters were combined to create this full-color view of Titan at high phase. The color in the image of the right has been computer enhanced to bring out the outer haze layer and the contrast in both images have been enhanced. For our trivia contest for this week, last year the Phoenix lander landed on Mars and one of its missions composed of a number of ovens. How many ovens in total did the Phoenix lander have? Send your answers to planetarytv at gmail.com we will select a winner from all the right answers and show them recognition by presenting them on the next episode of Planetary Television's Planetary TV.